Hello and welcome to Football Telgators. I am Aaron. I got here Andy and Yams. And today we have three questions or three topics that we're going to talk about. First off, starting with San Francisco and if they're going to keep Jimmy Garoppolo as a starter or are they going to look towards Trey Lance possibly. The second topic, we're going to have Jaguars here and if they should keep their number one overall pick or if they should look for more picks to trade for in the draft. And lastly, we have Baker Mayfield and the Brewing Rumors and if uh, they should, you know, trade for him, the Cleveland Browns, to the Panthers or the Seahawks and which team does he fit best from those two. So we'll start off with the first question. Should San Francisco keep Jimmy Garoppolo as a starter or should they actually start moving towards Trey Lance to start? We'll start off with the Amps. Yeah, Jimmy Garoppolo, he's a good quarterback if when he stays healthy. I say that they stay. They write they write they write the season with Jimmy Garoppolo this season and maybe start some kind of trade buzz because right now he's not really there's no one willing to get Garoppolo at this moment so I think for them for the 49ers is keep playing with Jimmy Garoppolo and Lance he still needs to be developed and I don't think they see the potential yet or I don't think they feel very comfortable giving Lance the starting job I do think they need him to stay in the bench and develop and learn before taking a big role in San Francisco to be the quarterback. And I think Kyle Shanahan is a good coach, and I think he sees this, and I think he wants to roll with Jimmy Garoppolo this season. Uh, I kind of agree with that because um, they need to see – They, I think they still need more time to see um, what their situation is. They should give uh, Jimmy Garoppolo a little bit uh, more of a chance – before uh, Trey Lance can even be looking as a starter because he's still, this is going to be, what, his second year, right? Right. It's going to be his second year, so uh, it's still a little bit too early. I mean, he might need some development. Um, or maybe it could be like a situation where we saw with uh, the Chiefs where Mahomes stepped up as a starter. I think he stepped up also on his second or third year, and he was amazing from like right off the bat. Uh, but with the 49ers, when they were switching between Garoppolo and, and Trey Lance uh, during the season, it was kind of rocky. And it, uh, I, I think uh, even Garoppolo was dealing with uh, some injuries around that time. So they had to start Trey Lance, which is, which is uh, fine. But I, I feel like they need some time to develop him before he, he can start. And I think after the season, if Jimmy Garoppolo can't uh, – take them uh to to the playoffs and have a good run uh, i think they should start uh considering or they should put more focus on trey lance and and build around him rather than jimmy garoppolo because uh both both qbs are are very different in their style of play and i personally find trey lance more exciting than jimmy garoppolo but we need to see if he's even capable of being a a really good quarterback, but yeah, that, those are my thoughts. What about you, Andy? Well, I think the 49ers and the Green Bay Packers have a sort of similar situation. I believe that they both are in a like in a situation that they kind of messed up when they picked their quarterback of the future. And I say Green Bay because... They have the backup there of, of love. They got him in the first round, and everybody went all crazy. It's like, how can you do that if you have Aaron Rodgers? And he's been there for a few years. I think one more year than than Trey Lance. And I bet I bet you, I'm a hundred percent positive. I mean, well, yeah, a hundred percent positive that if it was up to Green Bay, they would they would leave and like get remove Aaron Rodgers and just start love. But since they can see what Love has, they can't move away from Rodgers. So they're just sticking mm-hmm. with Rodgers. Mm-hmm. So they picked them in the first round and they're kind of like, man, we, we kind of messed up here. 
And with the 49ers, it's kind of a little bit of a situ- of this type of situation in which they gave up so much for this quarterback. And if he was that great and that impressive, I think they would have started him. Um, they, they would already have said, you know what, guys? We're actually going to, this is going to be our quarterback of the future. And mo- go ahead and move on from Jimmy Garoppolo. Um, they already saw what Jimmy Garoppolo can do, and they have been like talking to other teams and about about Jimmy Garoppolo. But I mean, nobody's taking him, so everybody knows what's up with Jimmy Garoppolo. Even though he has gone to the Super Bowl, he did lose, and mm-hmm. last year he did go to the playoffs and almost got to the Super Bowl, but lost mm-hmm. um, against the the Rams. So it is a very <laughs> a sucky situation for the 49ers since they don't have a quarterback like Aaron Rodgers. Um, so they're like, well, this Jimmy Garoppolo has taken us to the championship. He, we have gone all the way there, but it seems like they have to do so much for him to have so much for the team in order for them to get there, which is perfectly fine. But I think it's just going to be a situation that they're just going to have to keep with Jimmy Garoppolo, like you guys are saying, but in the sense of because I don't think that they're so happy with right now with Trey Lance. Um, When he started those games that you were talking about, Aaron, I mean, he did throw, what was it, like five touchdowns and two interceptions. His Mm -hmm. completion percentage was 57%. Mm -hmm. Um, So... It wasn't like, oh my god, what an amazing! Yeah, Did you guys he, see all those flashes. <laughs> he wasn't, yeah, he wasn't like a instant star. It, it looks like he he needs some development for sure. Yeah. You know, I I don't know. I mean, I'm not a big expert on this, but this thing that they call the quarter, the QBR, the quarterback rating. Mm-hmm. I mean, if if you go based off of that, he has a 33.4 on that, which is which really is low. bad. Yeah. Exactly. So. I think that they're just in a sucky situation. And, and then the draft, it doesn't help that there's no quarterbacks coming. But they're not even going to pick a quarterback. So no, I don't know what yeah. am I talking about. No. So um, they're just going to have to j- just go with Jimmy Garoppolo at this point because they're just going to look worse getting rid of him, of Jimmy Garoppolo, and then starting Trey Lance and just not even have even the risky chance of not even making the postseason. And then they're just going to look awful towards mm-hmm. the fans and to everybody else because of so much that they give up to get this quarterback. Mm-hmm. And like so much can happen when the season starts. Like at, at the end of this coming season, it, it could be a completely different situation. Like we we don't know what might happen. Jimmy Garoppolo might like be in another team by then, or uh, Trey Lance is starting. Uh, it's just so much could happen during that time, and it's kind of like you said, it's a weird situation. They're definitely not in the most comfortable situation. But, no, um, what team would get actually Jimmy Garoppolo at this moment? Uh, like in your yeah, guys' opinion, what team no, would get Jimmy Garoppolo no, right now? No, no. Uh, no, I mean, he's a starter for sure, but I don't think anyone would like give the, decent assets the for is him. he can't stay act, he can't stay healthy. That's the problem with him. He also gets well, injured, yeah. Uh, he also gets injured, but it's not only the problem. It, that's I mean, it's also the the talent wise, the because and he does, yeah, he seems like more of like he depends on his on his uh, on his coaches. Like he's a system yeah. quarterback. Yeah, completely. And I think the coaches are very smart. I give Kyle Shanahan a lot of credit Ooh. for building that team around them to be able to get yeah. all the way to the to the Super Bowl and almost again to the Super Bowl again this this last year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I mean that's so, that's why the Patriots got him for that reason. I mean, would, okay. What about Detroit? With Goff, it's who's better, Goff or uh, Goff. Jimmy? Uh, I think Goff, Go- personally. Goff, for sure. Yeah? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know he has gone to the Super Bowl, but it's kind of the same situation Wh- here. Uh, what about the Panthers with Sam Darnold? <sighs> Sam Darnold, for sure. I, I think that's I a little I bit close. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I can't really say that because, I mean, we can also say, I mean... I mean, that's another reason why, uh, I mean, I can even throw another quarterback with Baker Mayfield. There's not a lot of teams calling for his trade, right? But, I mean, um, Seattle could be one that mm-hmm. would go with him. But, I mean, I think Seattle, I mean, all these teams are going to be like, yeah, th- there's Jimmy, but, I mean. Uh, I mean he would be gonna... an amazing backup, but not a good starter, not good enough, I guess, for many teams. Exactly. You can't build. You can't say this is this guy is the missing piece to take mm-hmm. us to the Super Bowl. Yeah, he has like a pretty the Rams needed. 
Exactly, exactly. So, I mean, 49ers, what they need is that missing piece, which is the quarterback, quarterback. in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, just like the Rams. They were, like, really yeah. equipped defensively and offensively. Yeah. So, unfortunately, they're just going to be have to be stuck gonna, in the situation. They're going to ride it with Garoppolo. Yeah. That's, they, just, that's just the truth. And they just hope something changes where Trey Lance actually becomes, like, a really great quarterback. And, uh, and you see that? Was he injured last year? Lance? Trey Lance? Was he healthy to play? I can't remember. No, he, he was healthy, but then he yeah. did get injured. He did get injured, yeah. right? He did get injured. What was his injury, and then though? He, yeah. I don't remember his injury. But he was able, available to play in the season, and they didn't go back to Lance. He was okay to play, oh, but they still stuck around his with... He fractured his finger. They still stuck around with Jimmy Garoppolo, who had like a fractured thumb, I think. Yeah. And they <laughs> played with him being injured. That tells me that maybe Kyle Shanahan's already saw enough from Trey Lance, regrets going, giving up such so many picks for a number three to get him. Like I said, it's the Green Bay situation. The Green they, Bay situation. Yeah. That's different because that's the second round. No, and, that was a first round. No. no yeah, that was the Love first was round. The they first drafted round. in the first round very high up. Oh, that's dumb. Yeah. <laughs> and that's and why everybody got all like during the off. pandemic in 2020. And a lot of people are like, what? Oh, wow. Y- yeah. Yeah. yeah they really dumb. messed up. <laughs> yeah. They didn't people... they didn't give up uh, mm-hmm. picks like like the 49ers did. But they did get I mean, if you get a player in the first round, you're it's, that player is, is expected to it's start. start. Yeah. Exactly. So it's expected to start. But. Green Bay just messed up. That's why I really compare these two situations. It's kind of the same thing with the coaches, like knowing what they have. Mm-hmm. And kudos to coaches when when they know that they're wrong and they mm-hmm. just go with with what they think is best. I mean, instead of like looking bad and trying to make it work, I'll give you another example with Pete Carroll. Um, he got Matt Flynn back in the day because Matt Flynn did a good job in Green Bay. And they paid him a lot of money. And that's the year that they drafted um, Russell Wilson. Mm -hmm. And Russell Wilson, um, he wasn't a first rounder. And so Flynn was supposed to be the starter. They went into training camp. And Russell Wilson, like, anonymous, unanimously beat the beat Flynn. Like, everybody was just saying that he was just tremendously better. And they went with him. Not trying to make that big contract with Flynn work. So... Mm -hmm. I mean, I get I give credit to those coaches, and it's just like the um, Shanahan and also uh, Matt Lafleur. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. Kyle Shanahan is is a really good coach, and I think he mm-hmm. sees, though he hasn't admit <laughs> that he messed up, but I think he sees it, and that's why he hasn't been able, able hasn't been able to name a starter this year. Okay. So we all basically say Jimmy Garoppolo right now is their best option. For now. For now. <laughs> For now. Yeah, we'll see what happens uh, when the season starts. All right. For the second question, the draft is getting closer and closer. And I guess one of the one of the curiosities, like one of, one of the questions we had, I guess you could say, uh, is should the Jaguars trade their first round – uh, number one overall pick for more draft picks later in the draft. Uh, we'll start with Yams. I I don't see it worth it. I don't see it worth it for the Jaguars to give up the first pick because mm-hmm. I think Adrian Hutchinson is the best player, and to pass up on a on a player that's ready to go, I think that's a big one. And I just don't see anyone really worth it for them to trade up for. I just don't see it. I just don't see it. And I, I kind of do s- see that they kind of do have to give it up because that gives them an opportunity to rebuild. They're a pretty bad team. I just don't know how... I don't even know if Dan Campbell is the head, the right head coach for them at the moment. I'm sorry, not Dan Campbell. I'm sorry, that's Detroit. You mean Douglas? Douglas, yeah. Mm-hmm. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're talking about Detroit. Yeah, that, Detroit. Those, those are the yeah. second yeah. overall pick. Doug Peterson. Yeah, Doug Peterson. My bad. Yeah, he's a good coach. 
Um, but yeah, they're in, they are in total rebuild bit, rebuild right now. I just I just wouldn't pass up on a Ian Hutchinson. That's just me. Mm-hmm. I messed yeah. up too. It's Doug Peterson. <laughs> <laughs> it's Doug Peterson. Yeah. That's what I, said. I don't know why I said Oof. Douglas. Yeah, Peterson. Oof. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> I make a lot of mistakes. That's fine. Um, I think. Man, it would also depend who would be interested in getting the number one overall. I think that's another point that we'd have to really think about and consider. Who would move up? Uh, who who would like that draft pick? You know, um, I'm. I think. I I think. Yeah, they should. They should not touch it at all. They should just stick with whomever they need, whether you know it's Hutchinson or um, get an offensive lineman for Trevor Lawrence. I think it's just that there's no reason to like this draft isn't like insane or anything. I I think it's just going to be a regular old draft. Nothing crazy is going to happen with like some very high picks being traded or anything. They're just going to sit still with what they have with the number one overall. And you know who who knows? Maybe they might get Hutchinson and and make a really great pick because he's an amazing player. Or they just might go offensive and protect uh, Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, I think they're going to stick with their number one overall. What about you, Andy? What do you think? So, I guess it goes into some type of situations because if you have the number one pick, and um, I believe, like, in this draft, there's not, like, like a player that is like jumps off the pages and be like, yes, this guy's a for sure a pro bowler, this yeah. great talent. So we come into a situation that the Jaguars, they need to build their team. And it's it's not like this particular player is gonna like put them to the next level. So how do teams usually build a good a good team around them for the future, they need draft picks. And I think it's best for them. If they're able to get a first rounder for somebody that's like around pick number 10 or number 12, I would, I would completely take it and just get another first rounder next year, or even get another second round for this, for, for this year or in a third round, like get multiple picks as much as you can, but just don't go Mm -hmm. all the way down to the twenties. Because, yeah. I mean, then then you're kind of missing the point there. But if oh, yeah, somebody's exactly. up there, like from from 10 to 15, um, even 8, like 8 to 15, mm-hmm. I, I would just totally get it. And, and just, yeah, sure, take Hutchinson, but I can build off. There's so much that the Jaguars need that that it's, per- it's perfectly fine if they just move a little down and just get more picks either next year or this year. Preferably next year when you see more, um, more players that can be suitable for them so like where um where exactly would you say because we got like uh if you're talking about are we still talking about like single digit like overall pick like a sixth seventh like move up 10th 11th stuff like that or are we talking no, about eight like, through f- eight, well i was saying at first i was saying like from like 10 to 15 but i mean if the eight is there like yeah so i don't i don't mind if they go all the way to 15 uh, you can still get some decent a decent pick like around 15 based on mm. the players available um so i mean this this draft class they have a lot of wide receivers i know that dj shark left them so they need a replacement for him. Um, they can get an offensive lineman that doesn't uh, a, a defense an, another defensive lineman, a uh, corner. So you can do whatever is a, the best player that's available for them because they do need a lot of a lot of help. Mm-hmm. I would just definitely pull the trigger and just go. Yeah, here is my first overall pick. Give me your your pick for this year and next year. Or give me your second, give me your pick for this year, your first round pick for this year, and your second round pick for this year, and next year I want also your second round pick, and okay. maybe you throw in a third or fourth for next year as well. Like try to get as much as you can mm-hmm. for that first overall because we're talking about the first overall pick, <laughs> which yeah. is pretty a big yeah. deal. And, and sure. honestly, I don't see them moving. I think they'll, if anything, I think they'll move because look. Hutchison and Trayvon Walker, I think both of them are kind of slam dunks. You'll get more of a ready player with Hutchinson. So I can see, you know, even the Jets going up for Aiden Hutchinson. Or 
and I can see maybe the Jaguars moving up to go to number two. It's not m- much. It's not a big deal, but I think they're okay with getting Walker. What do you mean number two is Detroit? I keep getting these teams confused or what? <laughs> yeah, number number one is the Jaguars and then Jaguars, number two Detroit. is Detroit. Yeah, so they can go to number two. So you're th- but you just said the Jets moving number up. Number three. Oh moving down Cause... or up. Down? Or up. Uh, well, when when if, they move up, s- that means they're going up higher, like the Okay, higher so overall. yeah, to number one. So moving up. Sorry, I have dyslexia. So <laughs> the <good>. other way <laughs> around. <laughs> But you're saying the Jets to move up or Detroit to move up? Because you're saying if they go number two, that means that they're switching places with them, with yes. Detroit. To switch. To switch. Yes. So you're saying not the Jets, Detroit to switch up. Either the Jets or Detroit. I can see that happening. I, why would you? I, I mean, it's just one pick. If I was Detroit, I wouldn't put myself in that situation because I'm in rebuild and rebuild mm-hmm. mode. So giving up just for one player uh, at their point and they're just one behind, I don't think I don't think. Well, that's because a you good... still you still get a good you you still nab a good push, a pass rusher. So I think they'll be comfortable go, getting Walker at number two. Yeah, exactly. So I don't see Detroit moving up for. for you think Hutchinson. that's too small of a jump? Yeah, of course. Um, and to give up when you're in rebuild mode, also for the Jets as well, since they have the number four and number ten. Why would I give up any of my picks if I'm I'm in a really good position? If I was either of them two teams, Detroit or the Jets, I would actually move down and try to get more picks. Just don't go too far away from from the just don't be one of the last ones in the first round. Cuz that's look what um well, look what Detroit did and I mean, I, I feel so bad for Detroit, but they gave <laughs> their starting quarterback, Matthew Stafford, to the Rams for their first overall pick. I mean, for their first round pick this year. And look what what number they're picking. Yeah. They're picking last right. because they won the Super Bowl. So mm-hmm. it's not like, oh, we got a first round pick from the Rams and yeah, we're going to get something really cool. You're the last pick right. of the round. So... Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, yeah, they're picking second overall and they're picking last. It, I mean, at least the Jets have the four and number 10. So you can get some decent talent if you don't trade, if you don't trade down. But yeah, I think Detroit just, I don't see that happening. Yeah. And that's what I said initially. I don't think they will pass up on a player like Hutchinson at all. Look, but. the only way I see Detroit moving up is giving away, giving up that last 30 number 32 pick to i don't know go to the early 20s or something like that if there seems a player that they that they really want Eh, because when when (laughs) when you when a when a team wants when when the team goes up moves up is because they want a player it's Mm -hmm. not necessarily like the need is because they want that particular player so I don't know. I mean, if I was Detroit, that's 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 more of a move. I would move down if I if with the second round, the second overall pick, if I were them, or move up if with the last one. So that's that's what I would do with Detroit. And the Jets, I wouldn't do too much of it. it Maybe move down, so, but not too much. Okay, so now that you're 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 talking about this, so what do you think it would take for them to say, okay, here's my number one? How much? What's the cost? Well. For me, it would be, again, it really depends on the situation. If I was the Jaguars, I wouldn't, I would go from 10 to 15. I would go to 10 to 15. Um, so that particular team that's from 10 to 15, 10 to 16, maybe, mm-hmm. they have to give me their position and I give them the first overall pick. Now, this year, I would expect them to give me, give for them to give me their second uh, round pick and next year, their first round pick as well that's what i would expect or I, I maybe not even too much like you can give me your first round this year but next year i want your first round and your second round pick and also i'll try as much as i can to get a fourth rounder or a third rounder as well this year at least minimum so first round pick this year and the third i'm just trying to go as the minimum of what i need of what i what i would want because it's the first overall pick so for sure i need a first round pick and you know what that would be the minimum, but I would really try hard to get, like, 
two like two first round picks additionally from this one that they're gonna get for their first round when they pick in the mid tier. So, so the first round they're next year and the first round after that. So it's a total mm-hmm. of three first round picks. Even though you you can call them as two because you're gonna be picking regardless in the first round this year. And it would be <clears throat> it would be probably a team who has multiple picks in the in the first round that would do that kind of trade. I think. Yeah, like the Giants or the Giants. Or the we got the Giants, Jets, Houston, Philadelphia. New Orleans, Detroit. but New Orleans is getting a little bit high. Yeah, and Detroit, I mean, 32. Eh. I, exactly. I, so it would, I it would, would move be, Detroit out of there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It would be somewhere between Houston, Philadelphia, or the Giants, or even the Jets, you know. I'm, I mean, if the Eagles think, like, this Hutchinson guy or Walker is – the you think player that's what that they need? need for the defense. If I mean, if that, I mean, it'll help them for sure. Mm-hmm. Especially because of the NFC East is not super like. I mean, they, anybody can take that 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 division. So yeah. So I mean, if they really, really believe that that particular player is gonna like more solidify their to win that division, then why not and just give one of the first round picks? I mean, this is about trying to win, right? But I mean, they also have their. I mean, they also have Hurts, and that's another different story. But, I mean, they have to, these teams need to really be careful. Also, the Giants, I mean, they have to have a plan for the future. So it's not like let's go all in this year because for sure they're not going to be beating Tampa. They're not going to be beating um, Buffalo or the Rams. Like, mm-hmm. it's to build for the following year. So yeah. they're going to just... I mean, if this is the player that's going to help build for the future, go for it. But as long as they don't think that they're going to win it all this year. <laughs> the missing piece for this year. I don't see it happening. For Jaguars to trade their first overall right. pick? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not, it's not crazy. It's not crazy. Like, yeah, yeah, it's not crazy. It can happen. Um <laughs> Look what happened last year for Trey Lance. Who would have thought, right, for giving all those right. uh, first round picks for Trey Lance? So, what do you I, mean? I, yeah, San Francisco. Yeah. What were they number ten, and they went all the way to number four or something Let's like see. that? What do you mean? There was chatter about it. They wanted Zach Wilson. Yeah, but they couldn't. They, yeah, they, well, they were in a situation. It's because that for me, the Forty ers last year for the draft were a mess. Because the first overall pick we all knew was Trevor Lawrence. The The question mark was, what is the Jets going to be doing on number two? We didn't know. Either it was Zach Wilson. They could have gotten Trey Lance. Um, so there, there's an I'm missing another quarterback. <clears throat> there is so right. Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, Trey Lance. Oh, you're talking uh, about Justin the guy Fields, from Ma- Mac Justin Jones. Fields, Mac Jones, Mac exactly. Jones. Justin Fields. So there was so many quarterbacks, exactly. Mm-hmm. So the question mark was with the Jets last year, which quarterback they were going to take? Because I mean, Justin Fields was like for, was just gaining some momentum there in the in the end there, and then Mac Jones. I mean, he came from Alabama, even though the the last the few quarterbacks from Alabama haven't haven't been doing so well with Tua and and Hurts. So I and, and so what the 49ers did is that they moved up and just like well hopefully one of these quarterbacks like there wasn't a quarterback that they're like we have to get this guy mm-hmm. um I mean they were, I don't know if they were hoping for Zach Wilson to fall there but I mean they they took Lance they were they were, they just went and said well I mean we can win when one of these two mm-hmm. guys and I don't think that's the smart way of doing it just like well one of these two guys because I think they're set. They're different t- type of like skill set. Trey Lance and Zach Wilson. Honestly, I don't see them the type the same type of quarterback. Um, so I I don't think the 49ers really thought it through, giving so much just to be there. Yeah, and I earlier I said that you know Kyle Shanahan's a good coach, but now I'm like I'm thinking, well, what do you see? But Let's no. remember that the GM has a lot to do with True. it. And there with the 49ers, yeah, Lynch but... is has a lot to say in that in that um for that for that team. So True. True. Imagine I, if I guess... imagine if <clears throat> the 49ers picked up Mac Jones instead of um Trey Lance. Do you think they would have been in a better situation assuming that, you know, 
Garoppolo got injured and Mac Jones had to take over at some point? Yes, I do. You think it would have been a lot better for them? I don't know because I do. I, I don't I for me I don't know because Bill Belichick is the best quarterback and so you think and Mac his, Jones would not be as good in another team as he is right now with the Patriots because he led them I to the know. playoffs. He would be a great he would be great in the, in the Forty ers Who do you but, have in the in the Patriots? No, well that's what I'm saying that Bill Belichick created a really good system for him. So I don't know. If and Matt what Jones, is what is Kyle Shanahan doing with Jimmy Garoppolo? Yeah, creating a good system. You said it earlier. I did, but I mean, there are different types of quarterbacks now. Has has Kyle Shanahan had? I guess you can say in his days in Atlanta with um with um gosh um with I don't know why I don't know why I want to say Matt Schaub, but it's not Matt Schaub. <laughs> Are with, you talking uh, about the legendary Mike Vick? No, Michael uh, Vick. <laughs> Oh who? <laughs> <laughs> the quarterback that was for the Atlanta for the Atlanta Falcons, the last one. Matt Ryan. Matty Matt Ryan. Ice. Yes. Oh, oh, okay. Matty Ice. Exactly. How could you forget? So he that was the closest thing to Mac Jones as a pocket passer. Because other than that, who has he had that's a pocket passer? I mean, do you consider Jimmy Garoppolo a pocket passer? Yes. He's he's a little weird. I don't know. He, um, he does. <clears throat> I mean, he's more yeah. of a pocket passer than he is a. Uh, improviser like scrambling right right and i know he hates the cowboys too <laughs> <laughs> irrelevant irrelevant <laughs> complete irrelevant but i don't know if mac jones would have been doing really well in the system he would have done okay i would have said he'd done okay i think it, i right now i have to say that mac jones is better than trey lance just for mm-hmm. just doing the eye test right yeah i mean he okay i mean i've seen mac jones playing and he has one uh, he has won with the Patriots and having like like Yams was saying, not too much weaponry. Mm-hmm. So right now, I would say Mac Jones. Yeah, I mean, if you if you ha- if I have to say it, like have to decide, I would say that he would have done better than Lance and the Forty Nine ers mm-hmm. so far. All he right, would so have done better Lance and Jimmy. <clears throat> um, wait, what? He would have been. He would have done much better than Jimmy and mm. Lance. And Lance, yeah. I think so too. But anyways, we're we're steering away from the question. <laughs> so, I'm going to conclude the question. So, Yams and Andy, do you guys think it's worth trading the first round pick overall for a number 1 overall, my bad. For the Jaguars. For, so, for Jaguars, it it does for me as long as they don't go too far. Uh, they have to uh-huh. go between like the the highest uh, the lowest that they would go is to pick number 16 in my opinion. And then, if they go lower than that, then it's just not worth it, unless the yes. other t- the, the other team just gives like four first round picks, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. What about you, Yams? I don't. I don't think so. I don't see. I don't see it happening. I don't see any team wanting it either. I don't see anybody who's flashy enough to to go all the way to number one. So I'm gonna stick with no. Okay. I also agree. I say no. I think there's nothing too exciting about this draft, but besides um, <clears throat> Hutchinson. Um, now the last question. Uh, Baker Mayfield, you know, he, he's been on podcasts and stuff talking about the whole drama with the Browns, and uh, we've got a little bit more drama with, um, oh my gosh, what is his name? Uh, from the Panthers, the wide receiver. Um, Robbie, Anderson. Robbie Anderson. Robbie Anderson. That was it on Instagram that he posted a comment uh, saying no after uh, the caption said that Baker Mayfield is more likely to land with the Panthers. Uh, that's that's interesting. Uh, <laughs> so that that's kind of it would be weird if he would get traded at that point with that whole situation going on. But the question is. Um, do you think uh, he's going to land with Seattle or with the Panthers? And what, like, I guess what team he fits best, the Seattle or Panthers? I, uh, I Baker yeah. Mayfield, he, he's crazy. He's nuts. He has, he has this attitude thing that I just don't like about him and his podcast. And I know he said on his podcast he thinks Seattle might be the best 
Mm-hmm. I don't agree with that. I think maybe I might be a little wrong or a little off, but I think maybe the Giants might be a better place for Baker Mayfield. Also, watching that podcast and just seeing how angry he gets, <laughs> and supposedly that drives him and that makes that motivates him and all that, blah blah blah, and that makes him perform better. Well, if that's the case, then if he he seems to be so angry against the Cleveland Browns that I think maybe even going to the Steelers might be a better option for him because he can use that energy and that anger to to stick it up there to the Browns and say, hey. This is your, this is your fault. You're losing because I'm the best quarterback, and you lose. You lost out on me. Mm-hmm. Um, at least that's how I see it. I think the Giants, but between the Panthers and Seattle, um, look, I uh, I know Sam Darnold. He was a New York Jets, and I still think he can be a go- a good quarterback with weapons, and if he stays healthy. I just don't see much of a difference between Baker Mayfield and Darnold. I think it's like a 1-2% improvement between Baker Mayfield and Darnold. And I don't see Seattle a good option for him. If Russell Wilson, who I think is a better quarterback than Baker Mayfield, had some struggles, that that's that team is in total rebuild now, at least in my opinion. If I had to choose between the Panthers and Seattle... I would choose Panthers just because I feel like there's a little bit more weapons over there. Mm-hmm. There's Robbie Anderson and DJ Moore. And if the running back can stay healthy, I think they might have a better shot with Baker Mayfield. But also, it's really like a 2% improvement from Darnold. Um, <clears throat> that is a very tough situation that he has going on. And those two teams, they don't really seem that good from... Uh, well, I mean, I guess in... in if I had to pick, it would be the Panthers because, yes, it, they have more weapons. But, I mean, if I'm the team trying to acquire him, uh, Seattle would be the more likely. So, I think he's better fit with the Panthers, but I think Seattle is more likely to get him. He's 27 years old. He's, you know, he's getting close to 30 He's still, I guess you could say he he's he's young. Obviously, he's like for an athlete and stuff like that. Um, he's but he's starting to get that veteran experience, and I guess his anger towards the Browns isn't really justifiable because I mean they give him how many shots, like how many opportunities, and he just couldn't pull through. And he's angry with them. I if if I was the Cleveland Browns, I'd be angry at him for not. Uh, going over the expectations of what they had for him. Um, I think the Seattle uh, Seahawks, uh, looking at their situation with Drew Locke, I think Baker Mayfield is better than Drew Locke, and I think he would fit uh, not as good with Seattle, but who knows what they could do. They can move, I don't know, like the whole, uh, what Pete Carroll can do with them. I mean, they're the experts over there. Uh, I think the Seattle Seahawks are more likely to get him, but he's better fit with the Panthers. What about you, Andy? What do you think? Well, I guess it's because I I know what you guys are saying with with the Carolina Panthers, but, I mean, you started the, the question with Robbie Anderson, like, not wanting him at all. So you already start mm-hmm. off, like, negative with the Panthers, if you do go to the Panthers. So if I was in his shoes, I would put that one, I would think of that as well. Like, do I really want to go into a locker room that they, that he already has been talking to the other players? I'm sure Robbie Anderson has already been speaking about it. I mean, it's normal for wide receivers to talk and whatever. So it's already like things that he has to fix. And, and, and Baker Mayfield, he said in his podcast, like, you know what, I'm just going to go in and do my thing, and I don't care if they don't like me or not. I'm just going to try to try to do my thing and win, which is not a not a terrible way to do things, but also, like, you have to, as a quarterback, you have to get your team, like, together, and that's already a negative situation. Now, if we look at the, at the debt chart with um, Carolina Panthers and Seattle Seahawks, I mean... The biggest change, the, the the biggest change there, or the biggest difference there, is the running back with Christian McCaffrey. Which I will say that 
it seems that Christian McCaffrey is going on the downtrend now. He he was a monster, um, but not this season, but the last one, he was out the whole year, most of the whole year. And this last year, he was also lost. Like, he was also gone for so many games, for a lot of games. And then we have the wide receivers, DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson. Rashard Higgins is also okay. But then in Seattle, I mean, you have DK Metcalf and you have Tyler Lockett as well. So it's not like a big difference. I mean, in your guys' opinion, who's the best right receiver from those four? Robbie Anderson, DJ Moore, Tyler Lockett, or DK Metcalf? No, oh, DK oh, Metcalf DK. by by far. But I mean By far. Exactly. They don't they don't really have a running back over there in Seattle. That's another problem. Yeah, they've been I mean, Chris Carson is is okay, no, but I mean Yeah. Mhm. <laughs> I, I mean the running back for for <clears throat> the Panthers is the besides Christian McCaffrey they have Chuba Hubbard, uh, Deontay Dante Foreman, Foreman. Mm-hmm. and Spencer Brown. And for the Seattle Seahawks they have Chris Carson, Richard Penny, DJ Dallas, Travis Homer, which they're all kind of like the same thing I, in my I, opinion. I, when I, I don't see too much difference there. So that's what I said in the beginning. The biggest difference is the running back situation. But again, it's not like, I mean, can you can we really trust both of them, Chris Carson and, um, and McCaffrey to stay healthy? So, I mean, look, even Seattle Seahawks even updated their tight end to Noah Fant. So he was pretty, he was pretty good in, in, in Denver. Denver, and yeah. yeah, so that <clears throat> I, I think that overshadows for Carolina Panthers because they have Tommy Tremble for the for the starter. Um, I don't even know who that guy is, honestly. So honestly, I mean, I would I would go to Seattle. Um, plus, you have a coach that that no that has gone to the Super Bowl twice. So yeah. your best best your best chance to win is there, honestly. Now it's sad that nobody's nobody's picking up the phone to trade for you. These guys, these teams are just <laughs> waiting for you to get cut so they can get you for cheap. Because if you were that good, they would call and trade for you because they don't want to miss out on you. So yeah, Baker Mayfield needs to take a spoonful of humbleness because I don't know if it has dawned on him. Like it should humble him that nobody's calling to trade for him. Like, get the picture, dude. You're not that great for for me to trade for you. So he might not see that though. He he just he might be you know not he might not see it the same way. I guess. I really hope somebody in his camp, yeah, tells him something. Like, I mean, I mean, I know everybody. When you're like the superstar quarterback, everybody tries to like be nice to you and everything. But hopefully, he has somebody there to tell him like, hey, this next chapter that you're going to, wherever you're going. You got to do it way different because you can see like it didn't work and look at this perception, even though the media is going to be the media for you, like uh, negative or whatever. I mean, you can compare yourself to other quarterbacks. He drew, he drew negative uh, attention to himself, uh, kind of like Aaron Rodgers does. So it's just negativity media and you don't want that as a quarterback. So, I mean, hopefully he just changes his ways. See, but Aaron Rodgers, even though he is negative, but he's a good player. He's yeah. a good quarterback, so he can do whatever the hell he wants. Yeah, exactly. he can back it up. So, that's a difference. Yeah. And Baker Mayfield can back can't up. back it up. Can't. And yeah, that's a that's a com- that's a really good point. I mean, but look at Green Bay. Like I said before, they're in a stuck situation because they can't go with their backup because Aaron Rodgers is the is really good. So of course, they're not gonna let that guy go. So they look they look bad as an organization. Uh, so, and, but Baker Mayfield. I mean, if. He should compare himself to that type of situation. Like nobody's calling for you, dude. Like, it and is he what should it is. know this. In his podcast, he was he was um, five and zero oh at Texas Tech. Yeah, he said that like, right? he was he was hoping to get and a scholarship, was, uh-huh, yeah. and they didn't offer him a scholarship. And he was like, "All right, well, f you, I'm leaving." Yeah. So that tells you, <laughs> hey, if you are, it tells him, hey, if I'm performing well, I should get paid or I should get my scholarship. So it would be the same thing here with the Cleveland Browns. If he was doing so well, he would have been a, the quarterback, not Deshaun Watson. And also teams would have been calling for him. So if he understood that back in college, how, what's going on now? His ego? Yeah. I mean, if I was him, if I, I would start calling up these wide receivers. Robbie Anderson, DK Metcalf. He Metca- said no already. I know. I know. I know how he is. <laughs> 
But I mean, the quarterback is the most important position in, in all NFL teams. So, um, DK Metcalf also was was talking about also leaving Seattle. Oh, I know. I'm hoping it's with the Jets. <laughs> <laughs> kind of <laughs> wishful thinking. Well, I mean, then I mean that guy is a monster. AJ I- Brown too. And okay, anyways, let's just <laughs> let's stay on topic. So, wh- where would you <laughs> hold on? Where, where would you put Seattle then? Because. Uh, uh, also, Jamal Adams is there, and he might just start questioning his situation too. Like maybe he'll want out eventually because this team is kind of in a weird situation, wouldn't you think? It is. Um, it's just that they give a lot of power to Pete Carroll, and he's you about just... to hit retirement. But he hasn't even hinted to go into retirement, just like Belichick. And they're like, they're mm. up in age and mm. they're like close to 70 or if that 70. So, I, I mean, I would like to go to the team because also look at the coach in the Panthers. He's sort of like in a warm seat, not hot seat yet, but a warm seat. And with Pete Carroll, like he took him to the Super Bowl. He knows a winning mentality. So he can learn from that situation. I mean,. Over there and the Panthers, he's gonna be probably <laughs> he's gonna fight for the fighting spot with um with Sam Darnold. So imagine in training camp, I have to fight against this guy. And he's it, going to be on the fighting position. He's not gonna be here. You go. You're starting a quarterback. I'm sorry, Baker Mayfield, but that just doesn't work. I, I'm I'm just saying that's gonna be easier to win that position in Seattle. Ex- excuse me. To there, yeah. Baker Mayfield has a better winning position to win in oh, Seattle oh, yes, than yes, the Panthers. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry. Oh yeah. So that's what you're saying about yeah, for sure. <clears throat> I, and what do you guys think about my my pick though? I said maybe the the Giants might be a better place than these these two teams. So that... you're saying you're saying it's a trick question here. <laughs> it's not going to be <laughs> neither team. I don't think it's going to be either team. First of all, Panthers are drafting a quarterback, mm-hmm. so. <clears throat> Yeah, they're in a really weird situation. Yeah, they're, the they're, they're that they're I don't drafting. I don't know if they're I mean <laughs> yeah, they can get Baker or they can and I think it's getting Baker is just going to create a little bit of a mess. If you get oh, a quarterback yeah. from college, I mean, you can like like kind of like yeah, start no. molding him a little bit. But the thing with this coach, Matt Rule? Matt Rule he's from in the a Panthers. Hot seat, yeah, team. he he needs to start winning. He needs to start showing something. So he's kind of like I need to win. I need to continue being in the NFL. I need to start winning. So I think he's trying to move on from Sam Darnold, and he's looking everywhere. I mean, he tried for Deshaun Watson. That failed. And then he's trying for um, – he's been talking. Well, maybe there have been talks with um, with Baker Mayfield maybe going there and also all these quarterbacks from college. Now, for the Giants, I mean, I think for them – I mean, it sucks when you say that a team needs to tank in order to win, but, I mean, they're giving – Di- uh, Danny Dimes, the uh, like another shot. Like okay, like we drafted you in, for, in the first round. Like show us what you can do. We give you so many years, and so go for it. Try to try to win. So it shows like they're they they have faith. Even though in the back office, I don't think they have any faith in him. But that is a way for them to start building for the That's future. A, it's a way to tank it. It's a way to tank it, exactly. They're not going to say it, of course, right? But it's a way to tank it and just build for the future. So they have two first-round picks this year. And then next year, they're probably not going to be so good. And they're just going to get high picks and then get rid of uh, Daniel Dems. And then they don't have to pay him. <laughs> right. And uh, and that's why, I mean, I said the Giants and I also said steal, the Steelers. They have a quarterback competition right now. So, I mean, why not? You got you got an anger guy I don't who's think in a division, and yeah, he doesn't seem that type of guy to get no. someone. You know who though might uh, Detroit? That coach has sort of the same type of personality as Baker Mayfield, and even though no, I mean going to Detroit is is hard, but hey, maybe they 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 they're able to build it together and fi- figure things out in a way because they do have that loud that like type of like I'm gonna beat you and and i don't care what people say and this is who i am and stuff like that type of mentality so maybe even Det- i think detroit would be a better better option for him one of the one of the better options for him if it's not the panthers or seattle that's interesting uh, yeah that's pretty interesting um i'm trying to see what other team <clears throat> besides the panthers in, in seattle 
And yeah, I, I mean, it's it kind of weird. Uh, I it, guess. It is. I don't know. I I think Seattle. That that's my my final thought on that one. But if it were another team, man. Yeah, I, I don't. <laughs> It's because he, he's not like, like a great quarterback. That's the problem. And his like his situation right now is weird. Like how the media has portrayed him and how he, he's portrayed himself, actually. <clears throat> you know, well, he's, let he me ask you guys a, a question. What? If, if let's just say trying to think of another option for him. What if he just tells cool and you know what, guys? We don't. You guys don't know what's going to happen with Watson. He he might not play this year. So why don't I just stay here and play the season? And then once Watson comes, I mean, whatever you guys want to do, and if we're not doing well or or whatever, but he has to he, in his in his head, he needs to know that he's going to have to ball out this year. Uh, like, like he he knows as the players. He 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 lives there. He so he needs to ball out and show. But just put that yeah, for the that Browns and value. say, yeah, get, get that, that trade, trade value. value exactly. Built like ball out and just like just try to try to make the Browns uh, organization say like, yeah, you know what? Okay, fine, you can start. And maybe we win some games with you. Maybe we don't win all of them, but maybe it's a good shot for us to go to the playoffs with Watson once he once he comes in after he's his suspension. And maybe he's even suspended for the whole year, so we don't know. So it's a question mark, and that way he can build his trade value. What do you guys mm -hmm. think? <clears throat> um, I mean, yeah, I think I think that would have to be it because. It hasn't been confirmed that Watson is starting for the Browns, right? So that's he's not going to get traded before the season starts. It, he's, if anything, he'll most likely get traded after the season or mid-season. <clears throat> but yeah, he has to get his trade value up so uh, teams can, you know, maybe like, oh, maybe he's he's he can be that player for them. And, and pick up more interest from other teams. But he has to do it this year before it's too late because he's going to run out of time and eventually he just might hit, you know, the bench. <laughs> he might start warming up the bench, I guess you could say. What about you, Yams? Yeah, I mean, that is the smart move. That is a an emotional, intelligent, smart man to do that. But he's not. He's the, mm -hmm. He doesn't have any emotional intelligence. He's just, you know, you guys screwed me over. You guys told me I'm going to be the quarterback of the future. And two days later, you went ahead and signed Deshaun Watson. So now I want out. I will bet on myself and mm -hmm. just have another team. Yeah, like uh, Andy yeah. said, like like Andy said, um, the his, his camp needs to check him. You know, somebody needs to tell him a uh, reality to. check and and <clears throat> you know do the right thing. So he can have a career and he just doesn't sit on the bench. Because, I mean, he, obviously he'd be a, a great backup, but he doesn't yeah. want to be. So he, No, no quarterback wants to be a backup. They want to start. Yeah, well, I yeah, mean, most exactly. of them, I would assume. Unless you're, you know, Flacco. Unless you're a, ve <laughs> a veteran. Yeah, a ve a that's veteran, on the tail end exactly. of, of their career, yeah. Exactly. But, you know, something that he said that he just got, he said that he was disappointed with, the Browns in the situation that they told him, no, you're a guy. And then the following day they would try to get Watson. Right. That so happens. yeah, that happens. That so, happens a lot. That happens a lot. As we it's as fans, business. if we look at it, we know that the NFL is a business. So he needs to think of it as a business. He needs to say, you know what? I have to treat this. I have to sell it. And I have to figure out ways of how to be, uh, how to succeed and get the most profit um, for myself. And I think this would be the best way to get the best profit for himself. I mean, he they they got Cooper for the wide receiver. They still have um, they still have Chubb, which is for me he's pretty good. He's really good. He's one of the most underrated running backs in the league. So, and you have a a, a good defense. I think they just paid the cornerback Ward. A, like he's the highest paid cornerback now in the league. 
with 75, I believe, million guaranteed. Uh, I think that was reported today. So I think that's the best way for him to do it. Just just try to manipulate the situation and and just put up your trade value. And then that new team is going to pay a lot. To, if Houston paid a lot of money for Brock Osweiler, it happens all the time. When they built mm-hmm. up there, even it was if a small, like it shows like a big flash of like this guy could be it. Even Mike Glennon, when he went to Chicago too, they, they just money. These teams just throw a whole bunch of money at you. And right now nobody's <laughs> picking up the phone. So try to build up your trade value. That's what I would do. Yeah. So Baker Mayfield, if you're listening to football, tell Gators, go check yourself, <laughs> trade up your value. <laughs> this is business. Yeah, this is business. Yeah. Treat it like a business, man. And Treat so it's it like not a business. like. I mean, we don't want him to fail or anything. We we want what's best for him. Um, yeah, that that that's the smartest move that he can do. But we'll see if that's if that's possible. If if maybe who knows, one day he wakes up and he changes his mind and you know tries tries to do that smart move that we were talking about. You know, get his trade value up and, and see where he goes from there. But yeah, yep. Uh, that was, that was a very good, good, good podcast right there. Um, that's gonna conclude this episode for the football tell Gators. We appreciate all the listeners for tuning in, and we'll see you or uh, you'll hear us next episode. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Thank you guys. Peace out. <laughs>